Hey, you're still around. Excellent. Uh, welcome back. Great to, great to see you. So, this is the second tutorial in the series, and in the last one we covered the installation and config of the Android Studio development environment. It was a little bit long, um, but I hope you battled through, and by now you will have a development environment ready to develop your application. In this tutorial, I'm just going to try and make it a little less daunting. Uh, when you first open up the Android Studio, you're going to see a lot. You've seen there are a lot, of, lots of buttons, uh, lots of menu items, lots of things going on, and I'm just going to point out where we can explore, uh, where we don't have to explore, and just set our comfort zone. And maybe we'll uh, step outside that comfort zone at some point in the future, but for now, we're all beginners. So, the first thing you'll notice, well, you won't notice it until I point it out to you, at the top left, you've got the drop-down Android project views. Now you've got uh, the default Android, uh, the default project view is the Android project view, which is already selected. And what we've got here on the left-hand side are two items. I'm going to start with uh, the one named Gradle Scripts. Now, this is, uh, these are the build tools. Uh, the, the tools that build your source code of your application and turn it into an app that can be submitted to the store and installed onto your phone. Uh, we don't have to worry too much about the Gradle scripts, so what we can do is just collapse that and we'll never go in there again. And we'll move quickly on to your app layout. So the, if we expand the app directory, what we have here are three directories uh, that contain your source code and some resources and some manifests. I'm not going to go into too much detail of the actual contents of these files, but I'm going to go over the the, the layouts. So I'm going to pick the resource directory first. If we expand that, you'll find that underneath we've got a few subdirectories, and the first one almost explains itself. It's called the drawable directory. If your application has a background, uh, any graphics, uh, sprites, any any type of picture that you want to use and display, this is where it will be stored. Um, the next directory down, we've got the layout directory. Now this will contain a file for each activity or screen as you might see it at the moment on your app. So currently we only have one layout here that represents the main activity of the Hello World application we started. And we'll go into more details of this layout to XML file later. Uh, the next directory will contain an XML file for the menus, the MIP map directory contains the launcher icons for your application. So if I just open one of these, you'll see this is the standard Android logo. We'll close that. And the final subdirectory here is called values. Um, one of the, yeah, strings is, I guess, the easiest one to explain at this moment. I'll just tap this one open. Uh, so the values will contain default values for your application. Values that will stretch across your app that 
you might want to just change once instead of going into every single line of code that contains a variable and changing it. So this application that we've already got is called the Hello World app. And it's got a, uh, a string called Hello World, a variable, Hello World. And it has the string Hello World exclamation mark assigned to it. Now if I change uh, this string, the Hello World string will also change on our app. But uh, yeah, so this is this is the strings file. Um, so we've got a styles XML and here you can change the style of your application, have different styles, uh, different themes, and dimensions. Uh, this is where you can store dimensions of your app uh, for items, widths, heights, things like this. There is one uh, item you might think is missing. I've not mentioned sound and audio resources, uh, but we can, we can create an extra directory. So you can right click on resources and create whatever you need. And I'll cover that in a later tutorial. So for now, I'm just going to collapse that resource directory. The next directory I'm going to cover, let's, let's look at the Java directory. And this is where your project, your app classes are located. So here's the uh, app I named in the last uh, tutorial. Droid 101, and if we expand this, you can see there's one current main activity, and that's the activity that launched when you first open this example app. And this this will fill up with all of your project classes. So this is where we'll put put our uh, yeah classes. Uh, manifests. So, um, what is a manifest first of all? Every application must have one. Uh, it contains essential information. Um, well, when you first, you might have noticed when you first download an application from the App Store, you're asked for permissions. And depending on what your application does, uh, you'll list requirements in here that will be then translated into permission requests. Uh, it also contains the API information, so which level of Android your app is compatible with. So if somebody tries to download your app on a version of Android that's not supported, they just won't be allowed to. Yeah, so that's the Android manifest. And there's there's a lot more going. Well, one more thing I would like to mention. Uh, so we've already, I've already pointed out the main activity. And each activity will be described in the manifest and you can add descriptions of what that activity is and there are many things you can say about an activity but here you can see that the main activity is being labeled as the launcher and that tells the android phone that when you first launch your application to show whichever activity you've labeled as the launcher app activity and in this case it's the main activity that has the layout with the hello world string and that's it that is where i will like to stop short and sweet and uh, a very basic overview of the android studio development environment